36 times Sure Saturn line must be the smallest full frame anamorphic lenses that you can buy. Now they've just released a 50 millimeter and a 75 millimeter alongside the existing 35 millimeter. We finally have a strong set of focal lengths to work with in this line. If you've not guessed already, the selling point of these lenses are that they are incredibly small and lightweight as well as affordable and the fact that they also cover full frame sensors. I've been using these lenses now for about a month. So in this video, I'm gonna share my experiences shooting with them, a few tips to getting the best out of them, look at how they stack up against other affordable anamorphic lenses. And I'm also gonna show you how I like to use them with certain diffusion filters, uh, close-up diopters, and finally, how they perform when combining them with Sure's 1.25x anamorphic adapter to create a very nice and lightweight two times anamorphic setup. Very lucky I just got back from a trip to Italy where we were visiting Steph's family. So I decided to bring these lenses along in my hand luggage and they took up absolutely no space at all. I cannot stress how cool that is to have a, a small set of full frame anamorphics in your carry on luggage. I'm not sure how Sure have managed this, but this feature alone is incredible in my mind. I previously reviewed the Great Joy 1.8x anamorphics, which are fantastic anamorphic lenses. Um, I really rated them, but they are obviously much larger and heavier. So I took the 50 and 75 away with me, uh, paired them with my Komodo, which is a Super 35 sensor. But even with the crop, I really enjoyed these two focal lengths. Um, I previously reviewed the 35 millimeter on my Lumix S5 2X, so click somewhere here if you want to find out more about that lens. But although I'll be specifically talking about the 75 and the 50 millimeter, I will be referring to the set in general. All of the lenses in the set obviously maintain a constant 1.6x squeeze. Uh, they all have a T2.9 aperture and due to their size only come in mirrorless mounts. I honestly wish that they also produced EF and PL options, uh, even if these variants were a little larger so that I could use them across multiple camera systems. In terms of size, the lenses are all fairly comparable, but the larger the focal length, the larger they seem to get. But the gears, focus gears and aperture gears and stuff are all in the same place and no need to worry there. One of the big changes on these two new focal lengths relative to the original 35 is that for some reason, Sure have increased the front filter size uh, from 58 millimeters to 62 millimeters. This is a minor frustration, I think if only because it means any native filters you might have bought for the 35 millimeter obviously won't fit on these. Uh, case in point, I bought a bunch of cheap uh, screw-on diopters for that 35 millimeter, but I can't use them now on these two new focal lengths, which is, you know, a minor frustration, but you know, it's not world ending. <laughs> At 1.6 times, these anamorphic lenses are, I guess, just crossing that threshold of what I consider anamorphic in terms of that look. My testing, the image you get from these lenses tends to be what I'd call neutral or clean. They're very sharp, you know, eyes really pop when you have them in focus. You know, even wide open, they're pretty sharp. There is a bit of fall off towards the edges, but as you stop down to around T4, T5.6, everything sort of cleans up. These are not lenses that mimic vintage anamorphics with, you know, crazy distortion and waterfall, swirly bokeh. Instead, you know, they're very controlled and balanced and modern looking. So those of you looking for a bit more funk and grunge and character in your anamorphic lenses, you know, you might want to look elsewhere, especially as there are a few more options now that maybe tick those kinds of boxes. You know, you've got the Atlas Mercuries, the Dizio Pavos and the upcoming Blazar Remus lenses. You know, this is all incredibly subjective. Uh, many people who want to shoot anamorphic do so because, you know, they like the character and the distortion inherent in many of these lenses. So I think this is one of the main thing that will divide users on whether they decide to pick up uh, lenses like these. On the other hand, you know, that's not to say that these lenses are boring. They still exhibit some nice, lovely elliptical bokeh and nice flaring. But you know, on the wider focal length of that 35 millimeter, I did feel it was looking a little bit flat. And I'd say across the set, you know, then they don't necessarily have that sort of crazy, funky anamorphic magic that other lenses might offer. The tighter focal lengths do benefit from a bit more of that magic, you know, with a bit more background separation from the subjects. You know, it's a bit easier to get some of that elliptical bokeh showing up. Starting with a clean image is not always the end of the world because you can add some of that character back in the post and when using diffusion filters. 
uh, to soften things up. Uh, I also found that when I used the 1.25 times anamorphic adapter uh, and put it on front of these lenses that that was also quite a nice way to sort of soften them up and create a bit more of that classic anamorphic look. But more on that later. I did notice maybe a tiny bit of chromatic aberration on these lenses, particularly in high contrast and challenging areas. Uh, you can maybe see a little bit here with this sort of backlit uh, foliage and leaves. You know, it was very subtle and nothing I found particularly problematic. It tidies up a bit more as you stop down again to around T4. I got the neutral variants of these lenses, which means their flaring takes on the quality of the light source. Again, subjective, you'll know which one you prefer. I much prefer this to the other option, um, which locks you obviously into a blue flare. I just like the consistency where the flaring sort of takes on the quality of whatever light source you're using. Uh, and I feel that sometimes if you're outside with sort of nice warm daylight, that blue flares are maybe a bit more inconsistent with what you're shooting. So. You can see here in the footage that when we're shooting outdoors that we just consistently got this beautiful warm amber flare and I just personally really like that. The flaring behavior is also pretty consistent across the set. They're not the hardest lenses to flare um, but it's also not overly aggressive. I guess if I could choose I would maybe knock it back a fraction or two but it's you know it's a minor criticism and again it's going to be different for everyone in terms of their personal taste. <laughs> my testing I found myself more often than not reaching for diffusion filters to stick in front of them either a one strength glimmer glass uh, or a quarter strength black promist but because I found that these were such sharp and clean lenses that I just preferred sort of softening up a little bit quite liked what the diffusion did to the flaring on this it sort of smudged it out a bit and sort of made it a little bit less sharp and harsh my main criticism with the 35mm when I shot with it was that it had a pretty limiting close focus which felt particularly difficult when using it on a full frame sensor because it just sort of pushed you quite far away from your subject. I found it quite limiting, I found it quite difficult the way I shot and it was constantly sort of rubbing up against it. It's the same story with these two new focal lengths as well. They have a close focus distance of about 0.9 meters, I think, which again, you know, is not great. It means you're not going to be able to get very close to your subjects. It's less of a problem on the Super 35 sensor of the Komodo. You're really going to push up more against this when you're shooting in full frame. The good news is that this is really easy to overcome. It is a bit more fiddly, I guess, because it requires the use of uh, cheap screw-on diopters and these come in various uh, strengths. So I think I have a one, two, four, and a 10 strength. And these just work really well with minimal image degradation. The higher you go with these, you know, it allows you to get almost macro level shots. I'd really recommend picking some of these up with these lenses. So I'll put a link in the description for those uh, because they're really affordable. In terms of sharpness and distortion, you know, as you might expect, there is some sharpness fall off from the center, which improves at around T4. Main issue here is the pink cushion distortion, which is seen across the whole set of the lenses, really. I mean, it's, it's the most prominent in the 35 millimeter. It is present on the 50 and 75. Luckily, if you're on a Super 35 sensor, you'll probably be saved from the worst of it. But if you're in full frame, especially if you're shooting with lots of buildings and architecture and straight lines and that sort of stuff, you're really gonna see it. It is something you can correct in post, but personally, I don't like pincushion distortion. I prefer barrel distortion. Pincushion distortion, everything sort of bows in at the sides, whereas barrel distortion, it's the opposite. It has a sort of an effect of focusing attention, a bit like a vignette, but it's sort of like an optical form of distortion that is, yeah, just a bit more pleasant than most people prefer it. These lenses are T2.9, which, you know, is sort of in line with other affordable anamorphics out there. Um, but because of this, if you're shooting on a Super 35 sensor, you know, you're going to lose some of that depth of field, you're going to struggle more in lower light setups. So um, I definitely found this as the light was going down on my Komodo. And you're also not just going to get some of that sort of crazy depth of field that you would get with faster anamorphic lenses. secret weapon with these lenses is the 1.25 times anamorphic adapter that Sure make. Chuck this on the front and it converts these lenses into a monster two times anamorphic setup. And I found the results of this are kind of breathtaking for the form factor. I just love the images I got with this setup. It's a little bit clunky, but 
The fact that you can suddenly convert these tiny little full frame anamorphic lenses into two times anamorphic lenses, it's just kind of crazy. And the images look great from these. The flaring is maintained. I think the main criticism, whether you see it as a criticism or not, is that adding this adapter does soften up the lenses a little bit. I quite like that. I felt that adding the adapter and then even a diffusion filter really softened up the look of these lenses to a point where it just smoothed out some of that harsh sharpness that was inherent uh, when using the lenses natively. There are a few things you need to watch out for in terms of alignment and focus, but it's a pretty decent setup. It's pretty rock solid and on my Komodo, the camera also felt quite nicely balanced with this on the front because these lenses are quite lightweight. Adding a bit more weight to the front end of the Komodo just helps sort of balance it out a little bit. So I didn't really have any complaints there. The adapter also just has the benefit of adding, you know, a bit of softness and fuzziness to the look of the lenses, which I quite like, especially when combined uh, with a bit of diffusion. If you do want to maximize uh, sharpness on this setup, I'd recommend working between a T4 f5.6. I did struggle in lower light when I was stopped down on this setup. I was shooting with this setup at the end of the day. Uh, the sun had set and we're sort of in blue hour more or less. And the Komodo obviously isn't a sort of great low light beast. So I did push up against that. I was maxing out about ISO 800, 1000 and I was having to use a bit of noise reduction in some of these images. Uh, obviously, if you've got a low light beast that has a chunky dual ISO setup, you'll have better results. quite spoiled for choice when it comes to anamorphic lenses. So I don't blame you if you're struggling to decide, you know, what set to pick up. The closest alternative to these are probably gonna be the Lauer Nanomorphs in terms of size and cost and performance. They seem like excellent lenses and I think they've got a few additional focal lengths compared to the Saturn line. However, these are only available for Super 35 cameras. So I'd probably recommend the Saturns over those just because they're a bit more versatile. Although the nanomorphs do come in EF and PL variants, so again, it makes it a little bit more difficult because I'd say there's a bit more flexibility uh, when it comes to those lenses. In terms of the 1.8x Great Joy lenses, uh, it's a little harder, I think. I think overall I prefer the look of the Great Joy lenses, but they are twice as big. Uh, I think they're a little bit more expensive and you also have to contend with the non-constant squeeze factor of the 50mm. Um, and then there is a bit of variance in the image quality and flaring behavior across that set of lenses. There is also their Remus 1.5 times lenses, which are just about to come out. I think they'll have a bit more character to them, but alongside that maybe, from what I've seen so far, a little bit more like chromatic aberration, they're a bit softer. But they're also, I think, available in EF and they can be speed boosted, which is quite interesting to me in terms of using them on my Komodo and Super 35. So personally, I'm really interested in seeing a bit more sample footage from these. So, you know, if you are looking for lenses with a bit more character, maybe wait a little bit before dropping loads of cash on these Suray lenses. Honestly, I don't <laughs> really have anything bad to say about these lenses. You know, considering the form factor, price, image quality, you're getting a really fantastic deal, especially when you consider the bonus of having that 1.25 times adapter and being able to convert these lenses into quite competent two times anamorphic lenses. These are budget affordable lenses. I think I've got a review them with that in mind. For me, the size and image quality of these lenses is their biggest draw. You know, you'll have no issue sticking these lenses on a gimbal or packing the set in your backpack. The things I don't love about these lenses are their lack of character, lack of barrel distortion, and presence of pincushion distortion, their limited close focus. Many of these elements are subjective in terms of what you do and don't like, and I think are gonna be, you know, acceptable sacrifices for many. So I hope this video has been useful. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Sire for sending me these lenses to try out. If you're not, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm really interested to chat about these lenses with you in the comments down below. So do drop me a comment, especially if you've got any questions about them and I'll get back to you. Uh, make sure you're following me on Instagram too, using my handle below or pop up somewhere. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and until next time, see ya.